Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Talk Ray Bradbury. If you've not yet subscribed to our channel, please take a moment to do that now. All right, so we are moving on through the Cat's Pajamas Stories, a collection by Ray Bradbury published in 2004, mainly containing older stories that had been unpublished previously, but there's one or two in here as well that uh, were. Uh, today's story, uh, story number three, is Sometime Before Dawn, uh, written first in 1950, um, but again, not published here until 2004. The way that these reviews work is I do a brief synopsis of all the action, and then at the end, just sort of feels, sort of share some thoughts and feelings, and just do a brief analysis of what it all means and did I like the story. So, in August of 2002, the narrator, a janitor who is boarding at a boarding house, uh, he lies awake each night listening uh, to a young couple who is seemingly arguing sort of briefly, and then they hear a lot of, she, he hears a lot of sobbing from the woman. Uh, then he recalls their arrival at the boarding house about a month earlier, uh, the stilted way that they talked and asked you know, if there was room and board, uh, their youthful look except for around their mouths looked, seemed like they had been aging, and then um, sort of this uh, very neat clothing that he decided was actually seamless, which should be impossible uh, in his time. He also recalls how they seemed to hesitate when he first asked them their name, but then they sort of look at each other and say, oh yes, we're the Smiths, which was odd. Uh, one morning at breakfast, when one of the boarders uh, is reading the paper, he talks about politics, and he mentions that the president's been out campaigning again. And the woman says, I've always hated that terrible man, Westercott, and uh, nobody knows who Westercott is or what she is talking about. Uh, the narrator, um, who is a janitor, um, he helps out around the place on Saturdays, and he goes in to empty their trash can. It is then that he notices that there's a lot of clocks on the walls, and there are... Um, calendars, and there's a handkerchief that when he puts it in the incinerator, it will not burn, but the calendars are the most important thing, because they all sort of point to a, a, a single date on a calendar, which is August 18th, 2035, a date in the future. On another occasion, after being uh, seeing them inex inexplicably frightened by a plane, a mere plane passing overhead, uh, there's again sobbing that night, and he hears the woman saying, we're safe here, right? We're safe here. They can't find us. Um, and then finally, um, given the occasion, he asked the woman, uh, what was what was Westercott's first name? And it was Lionel. Uh, realizing that this is a very um, odd name, where there can't be too many Lionel Westercotts in the world, he goes to the library, and is there that he finds a listing for a Lionel Westercott who would be born or who was born a, a few years earlier but he figures out that West, Lionel, Lionel Westercott would be old enough to be president beginning on August 18th uh, 2035. So uh, this story was written in 1950 um, but it feels like it could have been written as recently as the last decade. Um, I'm wondering if uh, the dates were changed for this publication because it hadn't previously been published. Usually you do revisions. I'm wondering if he updated this to be more timely with the release of the uh, of the collection. I think so. It, seemed, it would be very, very um, coincidental if, in fact, it was ha um, written and he originally imagined 2002. Um, so uh, the implication here is that these people are time travelers. And as such, I'm reminded of another Bradbury story, The Fox in the Forest, which is about a couple who um, uh, they're engaging in time tourism, I think, but they're actually, they don't want to go home because things in the future are bad and they're being chased by a hunter who's sent to bring them back to their own time so as to not mess with the flow of history. I'm very much reminded of that. And I'm wondering if the reason this story was not published back then was that The Fox in the Forest had been published and perhaps they did, publishers thought the two stories were too similar or maybe Bradbury thought that himself. Uh, the story raises a lot of interesting questions. Um, are they are they simply fleeing the future in the past, um, or do they have other motives while they are there? I, I tend to think that they are in fact just fleeing. Um, are they are they in danger of being chased into the past? Uh, they seem to think so. Uh, they are very very worried. They're very very traumatized. And um, or are they, are they worried about the future in fact catching up with them because time rolls on? Um, also, um, there is sort of 
that you always think about when time travel happens and you're sort of fleeing a bad person. Um, could they be there to kill the future president as a child? And I think no. I think they're far too um, fearful to do that. I think they are simply hiding. Um, but I love all the vagueness. Um, the narrator sort of puts together the pieces of the puzzle um, along with us. Um, and I think that's a lot of, that's a fun activity to have that little bit of mystery. Um, but the point of the story, um, I think the point of the story is very much about political trauma. Um, uh, bad, tough political times can be hard to shake. And uh, this couple has run to the past to try to avoid a terrible future um, where a terrible person becomes president and does despicable things. And I think that is very relevant to this time without getting too much into our own politics. I think uh, anybody now living today who has a soul um, – must feel some sort of trauma for the way that the direction of our country has gone in the last decade and all the the constant worry of what the future holds and here we are um and we are in late september uh 2024 and just a little over a month from now there'll be another election and will things turn out like they did in 2020 where a lot of really bad shit happens in January. So, um, yeah, I, I could not have happened upon a more timely story, I think, than Sometime Before Dawn from 1950. That is story number three in the Cat's Pajama Stories by Ray Bradbury, published in 2004. And we'll be back next Saturday with Hail to the Chief, which was written in 2003 and 2004, which, which makes that a truly new story for the collection when it was released in 2004. Thank you. And I will see you again next Saturday. In the meantime, enjoy a good story.